Hello, assalamu alaikum. My name is Sumaya Hussain. I'm the author of Littering Stinks, uh, published by Compass Books and illustrated by Iman Salim. Chapter 1 She noticed it right away as her father drove into the street leading to their new home. A doll's head rolled in the street. An old shoe lay on the side of the road. Orange rinds were scattered here and there. The car came to a stop. Alia stepped out and looked all around. There was trash everywhere. It was Alia's first day in her new town, and she could tell something was not quite right. The company her dad worked for had transferred him from Fresh Town to Dumpton. She thought the name was a bit weird when she first heard it, but she had shrugged it off. Ew, why is there garbage everywhere? She complained. It's stinky, yelled her little brother Ayub, and there are flies all over the place. He shooed one that was standing on his face. That is strange, replied Mum. She looked tired. Let's get our stuff put away. For the time being, Alia forgot about the trash. She got busy unpacking her things and organizing her room. Soon the doorbell rang. Good morning, an old lady sang out when Alia opened the door. I'm Mrs. Wright. I live across the street. I couldn't help but notice we have new neighbors. Here, I brought you a little something to say welcome. She handed Alia a warm pie. Thank you so much. I'm Alia and this is my brother Ayub, she said, as the smell of the pie brought him to the door. She was sure it was apple, her favorite. By the time Mum had wrapped a scarf around her head and come to the door, Mrs. Wright had left. Who was that? asked Mum. Our neighbor, Mrs. Wright. She made us an apple pie. How generous, exclaimed Mum. Why didn't you invite her in? I did, replied Alia, but she said we must be busy unpacking, so she'd come by again in a few days. Consider it too, said Mom, impressed. I hope all our neighbors are like that. Me too, said Ayub as he took a big bite of the pie. Chapter 2 The next day, Alia was out with her family buying some groceries from a store near their house. As they left the store with their bags, they spotted Mrs. Wright in the parking lot. Alia wanted to say hi, but Mrs. Wright was already getting into her car. Alia could see that she was eating a chocolate bar, and as she started driving away, she tossed the wrapper out the car window. Alia was shocked. How could such a kind and generous lady be a litter bug? As they drove home, she looked out the car window thoughtfully. Strewn on both sides of the road were plastic bags, cardboard boxes, flattened bottles, and lots and lots of candy wrappers. She shifted her focus to the people walking in the street. Her eyes followed a young girl eating a bag of chips. Sure enough, the girl soon dropped the bag onto the sidewalk. An old man was her next target, and she watched as he blew his nose and threw the tissue in the street. Then she saw a, shop, a shopkeeper stepping out of his shop and throwing an empty cardboard box onto the road. Aha! That's why there's trash everywhere! I'm living in a town of litter bugs! Alia smacked her forehead, then she folded her arms across her chest. There has to be something I can do about it, she thought aloud. But you're just one person, said her brother. What can you do? Everything starts with one person, Ayub. I'm sure Alia will think of something, said Dad. This calls for a family meeting, Alia announced as soon as they arrived home. They all helped put away the groceries so they could get started. Alia got out a clipboard, some paper, and a pen. This is our new home, and I don't want to live in a stinky, messy town. How can we solve this problem? asked Alia. Ideas, anyone? I know, exclaimed Ayub. You and I will be the trash police. We'll patrol the streets morning and night, and whenever we see someone littering, we'll hit them really hard with our police batons. Wham! Then they'll never do it again! He beamed with pride at his idea. Sometimes I do feel like hitting people who litter, admitted Adia. It makes me so angry that, can, that they can be so careless. You know what else we could do? Added Ayub with a grin. Watch out for litter bugs from a secret hiding place, then follow each one and stuff their trash down their shirts. What can we do while also being polite? Interrupted Mom. I guess I can pick up the trash myself, said Alia, and she wrote the idea down. Maybe you can talk to people who are littering, suggested Dad. You never know. They might be convinced to change their ways. Alia kept writing. We could put stop litter we could put up stop littering signs around town, added Mom. We could get a cleaning crew together and do a weekly cleanup, Alia said. She was feeling very excited about all these great ideas. Perhaps you could try all the ideas this week and see which ones work best, Dad said. Sounds like a plan, replied Alia. She numbered the ideas one to four. Chapter 3 
Chapter 3 On the first day, Anya got up early and set out with a big black garbage bag. She decided to clean up the street her house was on, and she soon returned home with a full bag. But when she went out to check the mail an hour later, it was as if she hadn't done anything. The street was full of trash again. This, this one is definitely not working, she muttered as she picked up the clipboard and crossed off the first idea. On the second day, Alia spent the morning talking to litterbugs. They were full of excuses. It's just one wrapper, explained a middle-aged man in a suit. I'm helping the garbage collector find work to do, joked a teenage boy. There's no garbage can nearby, complained a woman pushing a stroller. Not a single person looked embarrassed or said sorry. When she got home, that idea was crossed off her list too. On the third day, Alia used black paint and cardboard to make 10 signs that read, please stop littering. She put them up along her street. When she went out to check in the evening, everything was the same. There was even trash right under the signs. Will anything work with these people, she thought, as she drew a dark line through the third idea. On the fourth day, she got her parents and brother to help her clean up the same street she'd cleaned the first day. The work was done much faster this time, but after an hour, it was just as dirty as when they started. Adia threw her hands up in the air. I might as well give up, she cried out in frustration. She grabbed the list she had made with so much hope and tore it into small pieces. Maybe I should throw these paper scraps in the street. She was yelling now. We'll fit right in. Mom took Alia by the hand and sat her down on the couch. She put an arm around her shoulders until she calmed down. I'm so proud of you, Alia, she said softly. You said you saw something wrong and instead of just accepting it, you tried to change it. So far you haven't found the solution, but I hope you won't give up. Dad joined them on the couch. The people in this town are not bad people, he said, and they do have a very bad habit, and habits take time to change. He paused for a moment. Sometimes our bad habits are like handcuffs. They're very hard to break out of. So what should I do? asked Alia. I'm tired of all the garbage, but I'm even more tired of working hard and nothing changing. She slumped back on the couch. I don't even know if I care anymore. Mom thought for a while, then spoke. When bad things become normal, sometimes the only thing you can do is not to be part of it. That will set a good example, even if it's just to one person at a time. And slowly, one by one, people will start to change. We all need good examples and frequent reminders to do the right thing, said Dad. Alia thanked her parents and went to her room. Over the next few days, their words were not far from her mind. Chapter 4 Before Alia knew it, it was the night before the first day of school. She was nervous about starting school in a new place. But something else was on her mind, too. She was thinking about what her parents had told her. Suddenly, she had an idea. She pulled all her plain t-shirts out of the closet and spread them onto the floor. Then she got out a black permanent marker. What you doing? Her brother appeared at the doorway. Nothing, she replied quickly. Well, something. You'll see. She got up to close the door. The next day, Alia walked to school with her brother. She wore a yellow t-shirt that read, Littering Stinks. Under the words, she had drawn a pile of trash with flies around it. People throw you out of town, joked Ayub. Alia shrugged. They can choose to litter if they want. I've chosen what I want. She finished her cereal bar as they passed a garbage collector holding a broom in front of a big pile of trash. The man looked overwhelmed like he didn't know where to start. I know exactly how you feel, she thought. She stuffed the wrapper into her pocket to throw away later. Alia had a great day and made lots of new friends. No one said anything about the message on her t-shirt, but she noticed a lot of people looking at it. The next day, she wore a red shirt that said, Garbage belongs in the can, not on the ground. On this one, she'd drawn a garbage can with a tissue being dropped into it. On the third day, she wore a blue shirt with a drawing of the earth. It said, this is our home, keep it clean. Lots of kids whispered and pointed when she passed by. On the fourth day, she wore an orange shirt with the words, every wrapper makes a difference. And on the fifth day, she wore a pink one that read, no can, pocket it. Several students and teachers stopped her in the hallway to ask her what that one meant. Alia felt a growing excitement. Chapter 5 the following Monday, Alia wore her yellow t-shirt again. Today, Ayub was wearing the same thing. Mom had helped him write the message on it. Alia thought she noticed a little bit less trash in the street than usual. 
I must be imagining things, she told herself. When she walked through the school's front doors, her mouth fell open. Wherever she looked, students were wearing yellow t-shirts, and they all had the words littering stinks on them. Alia, can I see you in my office? The principal, Mrs. Croft, poked her head out of the main office. Uh, sure. Alia gulped. Was she in trouble? When she entered the principal's office, Alia let out the breath she was holding. Mrs. Croft was wearing a yellow t-shirt, too. I couldn't help but notice the wonderful messages on your t-shirts last week, Mrs. Croft began. I've never seen anything like it. And I must say, I'm very impressed by your persistence. Thank you, replied Alia. She was still a bit confused. <clears throat> How did you get everyone to wear the same thing today? Oh, we have our ways, she replied with a wink. What I really want to know is how you came up with this idea in the first place. Please sit down. Alia took a deep breath and told Mrs. Croft the whole story. She told her how disgusted she was with all the litter and how hopeful she was that she could change it. She told her about the list of ideas, about her list of ideas and her frustration when they didn't work. She told her about the conversation she had with her parents and the idea that had come to her so suddenly. When she finished, Mrs. Croft was no longer looking at her. Her eyes seemed to be focused on something outside the window. For a moment, both of them were silent. You know, Alia, said Mrs. Croft, still looking out the window, you remind me of myself 20 years ago. I was about your age when I moved to this town. I was disgusted with all, with all the trash too, but I never really thought I could do anything about it. So I'm not the only one, Alia said. When I became a principal, she continued, I promised myself that this school would always be spotless, that not a single wrapper would be dropped in this building, but now I can see that I didn't go far enough. What do you mean, asked Alia. Ms. Croft, Mrs. Croft looked straight at her. You have reminded me how much potential there is in children and why I became a teacher and a principal. I won't make the same mistake again, Alia. I will do whatever I can to help you, and I won't stop until this town is clean. Alia couldn't believe what she was hearing. It finally looked like something amazing would happen. After the final bell, Alia skipped all the way home. She was bursting with excitement to tell her parents about her meeting with Mrs. Croft. Chapter 6 the entire school started to wear t-shirts with messages against littering until it became almost like a school uniform. Soon Alia was helped soon Alia was helping organize <clears throat> Soon Alia was helping organize a school-wide neighborhood cleanup, and thanks to some phone calls made by Mrs. Croft, all the other schools in town did the same. As the days and weeks passed, students all over Dumpton were talking to shop owners to convince them to put garbage cans in front of their stores. Kids whose parents worked for the government were talking to them about getting signs put up all over town and charging fines to people who littered. The town was abuzz with activity. Chapter 7 Every day the streets of Dumpton got a little bit cleaner. Within a few months, the trashy town was trashless. Who would have thought this was possible? Dad said as the family walked together in a park that was now really beautiful. Ayub took a deep breath. No more stinky smells, no more flies. Alia, you're pretty cool for a big sister. You're not bad yourself, Ayub. She grinned as she messed up his hair. In the distance, she spotted their neighbor. Hey, I see Mrs. Wright over there. Let's go say hi. As they got closer, Alia was thrilled to see her neighbor dropping a banana peel into a nearby bin. The only problem now, said Mom, is that the name of this town doesn't match anymore. Alia's smile got wider. Well, I'm sure there's something we can do about that. And that's the end of the story. At the end of the story, there are several discussion questions that um, would be really helpful to have between students and teachers, between children and the parents, or between siblings even. And one activity that I like to do is, um, along with reading the book, is I like to make my own t-shirt, just like Adia did in the story. And I'll show you an example of that. So here's a t-shirt that my daughter made. And here's another one that my other daughter made. That's, that's a banana peel being put in the trash can. So that's a fun activity that you can um, do with this book and kids really love that one. Well, I hope you enjoyed that story. I enjoyed reading it to you and sharing it with you. Um, have a nice day. Assalamu alaikum. Goodbye.